Today we're going to be talking about tips and tricks that speed up your workflow in the FL Studio playlist. Hey, this is Jeremy from Production Den. Welcome to the channel, the place where you can learn all about making music from start to finish. And today we're going to be jumping into my favorite tips and tricks and shortcuts in the FL Studio playlist. But before we do that, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so you can get notified when the new videos go live. And let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is actually navigation. Because navigation is one of those things that it seems small, but it can really help once you know a couple of tips and tricks around this. So the biggest thing in this is I like to make sure that the using the mouse scroll wheel. So if you use the mouse scroll wheel and you press control, you'll see as I push up and down, it actually expands out so I can zoom into a very fine piece of the, the song that I want to do. And then the same thing for the alt. If I hold down the alt key and use the scroll wheel up and down, I can really fine tune what I'm getting into listening to. Uh, and another thing is this little section up at the top is like a, a small, small overview of everything that's in the song. So if you wanted to zoom over to a particular section, you just drag along there. And the same thing along here, is if you use your mouse scroll wheel when you're in this upper section, you can go back and forth as well. So those are just some quick tips for getting around the project that you're working in in the playlist, especially as you start getting more files and you start building bigger projects, that can be really helpful. The next thing that I actually wanna to touch on is organization. If you look inside of this project, I have everything fairly color coded um, and I do that intentionally. When I originally record this, this is all messy and they're not the same color. But when I'm naming the files, when I'm recording them, I'll usually put the instrument out front. So like electric is for the electric guitar, ACG is for the acoustic guitar, and then I have keys and some other things like that. So Vox, I know that those are voice, like lead voice, and then layers or BGVs, those are usually background vocals. Um, and I name everything intentionally when I'm recording it so that as I go back to try to organize it, it makes it a little bit easier to move things around. Um, so one of the things that I'll do a lot of times is just create sections in the song to organize everything. So I'll usually put a lot of my drum stuff up front and then I'll have bass. Usually I don't have the voices um, next, but in this particular project I did, and then I'll have things like other instruments, so uh, electric guitar, acoustic guitar, keys and other strings, um, synth and that kind of stuff I usually group together as well as effects or uh, large percussion sounds and things like that. Um, and so I have those color coded, but the other thing that I like to try to do is actually go in and actually color code the tracks that they're a part of. So I would come in say this track 12 where the bass starts and I'll say, let's rename this. These are gonna be bass tracks and I would come in here and select the color. Let's just go for something in that yellowish range and just say okay. And that puts that background on there as well as highlighting this track. Um, and then I like to, you can group the tracks together. So I right click on the next track, which is track 13. And I'll say group with the above track. Same thing with track 14 and with track 15. So now all of these are collapsible into a group. And what you can do is you can say uh, auto color the group. And so it'll go ahead and color all of those tracks the same. So at a glance, if I'm really zoomed out on the project, I could see, okay, my bass tracks are all right here. And then if I were to go down, I could do the same thing with electric. Do the same little trick, auto color the group. And now at a glance, I know where all my bass tracks are. I know where all my electric tracks are. And the nice thing about this is you can actually highlight and focus on a particular group of instruments. So if I wanted to just focus just the electric, uh, tracks, I could hold down Control and Alt, and if I click on that green button that's right beside there, right here, then that will just open up or just highlight those tracks. So it's kind of like soloing an entire group of tracks. And then if I click back off of it, I can do the same thing. Um, and the other thing that you can do is you can actually mute out a group of tracks. So if you hold down just Alt, 
you can take that just that group of tracks away instead of having to do each individual one at a time if you were to go through and do that. So that's one of the ways that I like to organize my files is putting in the color coding and the track heading for that so that everything is grouped together. It's easy at a glance in a project to come in and find out where everything's at. One of the things that I run into sometimes, I'll just demonstrate this, is I'll have maybe some files that are down here at the bottom of the track, but I really need to bring them up here because they're actually a percussion and something that I added at the end. And one of the things that you can do is you can right click at a track up here and if you press I or insert one, it'll insert some tracks and you can keep doing that, right click and I. And then I will highlight those tracks. I'll press control while I'm using the pencil tool and I'll um, drag around those clips and then I hold down shift and then I use the up and down arrows on the keyboard and I can take those tracks all the way up to where I want them to be. Um, and this is really, really helpful. The, the shift trick saves you a ton of time because a lot of times if you just drag it with your mouse, it'll actually shift off of where it was originally and then you may not realize that until you go back in and you're trying to adjust something. So that's a really helpful trick to keep everything in line where you want it to be but maybe make space for new instruments where you want to push them up into the arrangement to a certain spot so you group all your drums together or group in your bass. Because I know when I'm recording, I don't always record everything in line, all the different layers. I'll go through and get a rough structure and then I'll start recording in different things that will help fill out the song a little bit more. Another thing that you can do to, to move audio files around if you have, say, one audio file on a track that's all by itself and you know that you want it pushed to a different place, you could hold shift and scroll with your mouse wheel down and you can bring it up or down and that'll just take that entire track one direction or another. So that's another quick, trip for, quick tip for arranging your clips the way that you want them to be arranged. And there may be some times when you're actually recording audio that you realize that it got pushed off of the grid a little bit. It's not quite where you want it to be. And if you were just to come in here and try to move it, it snaps it to the next line or whatever you have selected as your um, snap feature up here. But one way to get rid of having that snap feature and to be able to edit it a little bit more loosely is if you hold down Alt while you're dragging it with the pen tool, you can get a lot of a cleaner, a lot cleaner of a way of doing that by holding that alt and then dragging it around. And that's really helpful when you need to adjust things a little bit off of the grid from, from what it normally is. So now I wanna jump over to talking about editing in the tracks a little bit. Um, and one of the things that I usually have to do when I've gone in and recorded audio is there will usually, and I've already done most of it on this one, but there'll usually be some tracks that will have maybe some outro things where I stopped the recording and it picked up things on the microphone at the beginning or the end of the track. Um, and you can go in and edit it a couple different ways. A lot of times I'll use the, the slice tool. So I'll come in here, I will press Y, which is like an auditioning thing. And then I'll go over top of that track and just listen to a portion of it. So this is a shaker track. And this is where I stopped. I stopped the recording, you can hear this little bit of a, a noise at the end. So you can either come in with this tool, which is the slice tool, and you press C to do that, and you can come in and just drop it really easily there, cut the section off and then right click on it with the pencil tool, and it'll go away. Or another way that you can do it is actually to come in here, make sure that this stretch is not checked, and then all you have to do is drag it from the right side and take out the portion of the audio that you don't want to have happening there. Um, that's a really easy trick to clean up your audio a little bit more. And if you have any um, issues with pops or clicks or anything like those at the end of the file, you can actually come in here to de-clicking mode and choose one. You could do like a crossfade so as you come in here and you start making adjustments, oops, make adjustments on here, it'll actually crossfade between so that you get rid of any clicks that you might have. So that's 
something else that you can put into your mixes that will help you if you ended up having some noise at the end of your recordings or it stopped really abruptly or you're hearing some sort of a click then you can go in there and adjust that by um, like I said double clicking to bring up the actual sound and then going into the de-clicking mode and then picking that de-clicking crossfade uh, mode and that'll help you be able to, to round that sound out without having those clicks or pops at the end where you make cuts. Um, so that is another editing thing that I use a lot. Um, one thing that I find myself doing a lot as well is I'll create a section of some things that I end up wanting to, to duplicate or something along those lines. So like I've created a chorus and I have all the basic instruments and some of the scratch vocals together. If I want to duplicate that really quickly for a point of reference, um, I can highlight the, the sections that I want to duplicate um, by control and dragging around all those things. And then I press control B and that will drag out, that will create a new copy of those instruments. And then you can drag that to another place and now you have created very quickly like a whole other section so another chorus that you can put at a different part of the song. Um, another thing that you can do if you don't want to use the control B uh, is you can highlight around all those the same way that you did before. Just drag it around all those files that you want and then if you hold shift and then left click and drag you can create a copy that will go over there. And you may drag in some other things that you didn't want but that will essentially do the same thing. It's just a different method of doing that. Um, one thing that I'll do sometimes when I've been working in a section, I'll have it highlighted and I'm, I'm playing through a particular section of a song and I'm ready to move on to something else and then it ends up screwing things up because it's on this weird loop. So one of the quick tips for that to get out of that loop mode is to press Control and D and that's just a general deselect. So if you have any of these uh, audio files selected, you press Control D, it'll deselect them. As I start getting into the mixing phase, there's a lot of times where I'm trying to figure out um, a mixer track to push a certain uh, audio file to. And so I have to figure out what that audio file is first, figure out where it is in the control or in the channel rack and then push that into a mixer track. So a lot of times what I'll find myself doing is using these preview tools to figure out where the audio file's at. So I have my audio files, I'm pressed on audio files here at the top of the um, channel playlist and then I'm looking at the section that I'm working through. Now if I press Y, I can preview just one of those channels. And you'll see over here that there's a little blue icon that shows up that shows you which of those channels it is. You can either use your pencil tool and double click on it and it'll bring it up and then you can push it into the mixer track that you want to or you can just highlight it here and then if you press F6 when you come over that channel is highlighted as well. And that can be helpful when you're trying to push different tracks into the mixer to start mixing those things. And there might be times also that you're working through a track and you realize that you need to mute something out because you're not sure whether that's adding anything beneficial into the track. So if you select the T on your keyboard, press T, it's actually the mute tool and you can mute and unmute tracks really quickly. So as you're listening through a section, you'll be able to unmute or mute certain things. So if I wanted to listen to this section, but I wanted to take out all of those claps really quickly. Be found. they were adding what they weren't adding I can use that mute tool to, to bring them in or bring them out um, so that's a quick way of doing previews of whether or not a track that you've put in is actually helping your song or not helping your song and sometimes you might realize that you just need to pull that out because it's not really contributing anything and one of the things that I've been really interested in here recently is actually doing using the render function for uh, certain instruments that are just maybe MIDI stuff so I can cut down on the amount of CPU that I'm using when I'm going into the playlist mode or I'm ready to commit to the sound. Um, so let's just take this track for instance. I'm gonna go ahead and insert one below it 
And this is just, let me give you a preview of what this is. It's just kind of a weird little synth sound that's going on in certain parts of the chorus. Um, if I want to consolidate that into an audio file really quickly, I can right click here and I can say consolidate this track and I want to do it from the song start. Actually, let's just do it from the track start. And what that will do is actually render that MIDI file out into actual audio so that you can mess with that directly or, or mix that directly, whatever you need to do. So it'll let me select this. I'll go into here. I'll say, go ahead and render this. These look like okay settings and it goes ahead and starts rendering that track for you. So now you can see it's rendered out the audio track up here. It's called it the track 53 consolidated. And it's the same audio that was playing with the MIDI and now it's just muted out those MIDI channels and left the audio in there. And then you can go in and do things like dropping down here, renaming and coloring it. So I might call it the same thing, the Brassy GMS. And then it is now rendered as an audio file and it's not as much CPU that's being used as I'm working through this playlist or working through the song. Well guys, I hope that was helpful for you to be able to see some tips and tricks to speed up your workflow in FL Studio Playlist. I know I didn't cover everything and if you have any favorite shortcuts that I didn't share, I'd love for you to enter those into the comment section below so that we can just create this giant record for people to be able to see all kinds of tips and tricks that they can use. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next round.